There's an old adage that goes by, you are what you eat. And in pregnancy, this actually is kind of true because what you eat can actually influence what your amniotic fluid smells like and tastes like. <laughs> Studies have shown that that may even influence your little one's palate when they are born. But even more importantly than that, studies have shown that your diet during your pregnancy can affect the future health of your unborn baby. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about what foods you should eat and what foods you should avoid when you're pregnant. And make sure to stick around because at the end of this video, I'll tell you what I consider to be the superfood. And the good news is, it's actually pretty delicious. But before I get into this video, my name is Diana. I'm a physician assistant and I specialize in women's health and gynecology. Thank you for watching my channel. Remember to hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Now before I jump into this video, I'd really like to hear from you. Are you in your first trimester or your third trimester? Maybe you're watching because your partner is pregnant or are you just thinking about getting pregnant and trying to learn what you can? Put that in the comment section down below. So when you are pregnant, your body needs more of certain vitamins and minerals and calories to support the pregnancy. So first off, let's talk about how much you should be eating. How many of you have heard someone say to you, eat all you want because you're eating for two? Okay, that is true that you're eating for two, but the other person you're eating for is like, for example, at eight weeks along, only two and a half centimeters and only weighs like a third of an ounce. So seriously, you do not need to double your calorie intake. In fact, for the first trimester, you don't need to increase your calorie intake at all. For the second trimester, you wanna increase your calories by only 350, and then in the third trimester, you'll want to take in about 450 more calories. And to help put this into perspective, 350 calories is only about two glasses of skim milk. Now, if you are carrying multiples, an easy rule of thumb is to eat at least 300 calories a day more per kid. Also remember that the dietary changes that support a healthy pregnancy begins before you even conceive. So if you plan on getting pregnant anytime soon, this is important information for you too. It's also important to have the right amount of weight gain during pregnancy. Both eating too much and eating too little can cause complications for both you and your baby, which is another reason why it's important that you plan your pregnancy diet carefully. So honestly, there are tons of different dietary advice that you can find on the internet, books, or magazines and it might be overwhelming. So I'm gonna break it down for you into three simple categories. Things you should eat more of, things you should eat less of, and things you shouldn't eat at all. So let's start with things that you should eat more of. First off, you're gonna to wanna to eat things that are rich in folic acid. Folic acid, also called vitamin B9, is a well-known and undisputed vitamin that every pregnant patient is recommended to have. So it's so important, in fact, that it's one of the main reasons you need to be taking your prenatal vitamin, which will contain folic acid. It's recommended that you have at least 400 micrograms of folic acid a day. Some prenatal vitamins have a little bit more than that, that's fine. And women with increased risk for neural tube defects in their baby may need to take more than that, but your OBGYN will usually screen for your risk at your first OB appointment. Even if you are taking a prenatal vitamin, it's still good to try to consume foods rich in folate. Folate is the natural form of folic acid. This includes foods like leafy vegetables, like spinach, romaine lettuce, kale, uh, peas, beans, and asparagus. Lentils are also a good source of folate. I honestly have never cooked lentils in my life, but they are one of the most folate dense foods. So hey, if you love lentils and actually know how to cook and eat them, please tell me in the comment section below how to cook them because I have no idea. Along with 400 micrograms of folic acid, try to also get 600 IUs or international units of vitamin D and 1000 milligrams of vitamin C each day as well. By the way, if this is your first time joining me, I've actually done an entire pregnancy series walking you through pregnancy week by week. I talk about baby development, symptoms that you'll be feeling, what to expect at your doctor's appointment, a ton of stuff, week by week, close to 40 videos, all about pregnancy, answering your questions, helping you through your pregnancy journey. So I'm gonna put a card right here and at the end of the video, so be sure to go check it out. Okay, let's continue with the video. Next, let's talk about whole grains because you can't live on greens alone. At least I can't. For your carbohydrate source, it's best to avoid simple carbohydrates. Choose a complex carbohydrate instead like 
whole grains. So replace your white rice with brown rice and replace your white bread with whole wheat bread. Oatmeal is also a good source of carbohydrates. You'll have less chance of developing gestational diabetes when you consume whole grains. These sources of carbohydrates have a lower glycemic index, which means that they don't break down as quickly into sugars so that you don't have spikes in your blood sugars after you're eating. It's also a good source of vitamin B, vitamin E, magnesium and zinc. As far as dairy goes, you can still consume dairy containing foods. So this includes low fat milk, yogurt, and soy if that's what you enjoy. Whole fruits are a good source of vitamins and minerals. Citrus fruits like oranges and lemons are great because they are rich in vitamin C. Now during childbirth, whether you undergo a C-section or a normal delivery, there's a certain amount of blood loss expected. Iron is an important component of blood production because it's a component of hemoglobin. There is iron in prenatal vitamins and your OB may prescribe extra iron if you are anemic. So along with eating iron-rich foods, you can also eat iron-rich fruits like dates, raisins, uh, proteins and figs. For your protein source, ideally choose lean meat. Lean meat just means that it's meat with less fat. So for example, chicken breast without the skin, because skin of a chicken is like 80% of the total fat content. Pork chops are okay as long as you trim off the fat. And if you're a vegetarian, alternative sources of protein are available in the form of peas, nuts, uh, soy products, and beans. If you're not allergic to it, seafood in general is also a good protein source. Seafoods are also rich in iodine, which is a nutrient needed for the formation of thyroid hormones. Thyroid hormones are needed for proper brain development and growth of the baby when it's still in the womb. And fish and shrimp in general is a really good source of vitamin A and very importantly, DHA. DHA stands for, I'm gonna try to pronounce it, docosahexa docosahexaenoic doco docosahexaenoic acid seriously though literally nobody calls it that it's just dha for short dha helps to promote your baby's brain eyes and nervous system development it also helps to prevent preterm labor and can support postpartum mood in new mothers now i'm going to use fish as a segue into foods you should be eating less of because you do need to be aware of the kind of fish you are eating you're going to want to avoid eating fish with high mercury levels mercury is known to cause birth defects and developmental problems for unborn babies so you want to avoid eating any fish with high levels of mercury. An easy way to know what fish have are if they eat larger fish that eat other fish. So when you're pregnant, don't eat swordfish, uh, big eye, king mackerel, marlin, orange roughy, tailfish, tuna, or shark. Okay, so what if you wanna like eat a tuna fish sandwich? That is considered safe if you keep it to once a week or less. This next part comes with a disclaimer. Pregnancy is a state where hormones are at an all time high and women have more of a sensitivity to sense of smell and taste. And this gives rise to oddly specific cravings, which occur more often during the first and second trimester. I'm telling you, being pregnant is no piece of cake. Ooh, cake. This is all part of a normal pregnancy. So I would personally never ever say that you can't eat any of the foods that I'm about to talk about. Because first off, I would be a huge hypocrite. And second off, even unhealthy treats are fine in moderation during your pregnancy. But you wanna to try to moderate your sugary food intake. So you can still eat sweets and other sugar-containing foods like ice cream or chocolate or cake or whatever it is that you love. However, try not to eat it every day. Remember to portion your sweet tooth accordingly. More than 5% of your calorie requirement to be sugar. They are empty calories. Saturated fat is one of the types of fat that you should avoid. It tends to raise the bad cholesterol in your blood and lower the good type of cholesterol. Too much of the bad cholesterol is associated with heart disease like hypertension and, and high cholesterol. Saturated fat can be found in butter, lard, cake, sausage, bacons, and other cured meat. Now I often get asked about processed lunch meat or deli meat and if that is safe to eat when you're pregnant. The concern with lunch meat is that it can sometimes harbor a bacteria called listeria. Listeriosis can be a serious infection, but most healthy non-pregnant adults don't get listeriosis when they're exposed to the bacteria. Pregnant women, however, are 20 times more likely to get listeriosis than someone who isn't pregnant. And if they get it, the symptoms are usually mild, written off like as a cold or a mild flu. But for the fetus, a listeriosis infection can cause serious problems. It can lead to a miscarriage or to a stillbirth. That being said, 
It's not a common problem, at least here in the US, but just to be sure, I recommend heating up your lunch meat before you eat it. Now, as a side note, if you grow your own fruits and vegetables at home, make sure to wash them before you eat them. Listeria is also found in soil too. You'll also want to avoid undercooked or raw eggs and meat. The same goes for raw fish. I personally really struggled with this because I love sushi, but as of now, ACOG, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, recommends that you avoid sushi while you're pregnant. Now, if you're watching this and you're reminded of that spicy tuna roll you ate last week, assuming you were eating sushi grade sushi that was frozen properly, which kills most of the bacteria and parasites, what you ate was fine. Don't stress over it. Just avoid it for the rest of your pregnancy. And if you are having major sushi cravings, like I did, eating cooked rolls like California rolls, totally fine. California rolls. Don't drink unpasteurized milk. Now in the US, it's hard to find unpasteurized milk unless you like literally own a cow. But in general, if you buy the milk at the grocery store, it's gonna be pasteurized. But that's not the case with soft cheeses. So make sure that when you buy soft cheese, that it actually says made with pasteurized milk on the package. So like cottage cheese, ricotta, mozzarella, feta, cream cheese, those are all totally safe. Just read the label to be sure. Now you'll want to avoid mold ripened soft cheeses. These are things like brie, Danish blue, gorgonzola cheese. The mold in them can also contain listeria. So make sure that your soft cheese is made from pasteurized milk and make sure that it doesn't have that whitish coating around the cheese, which means that it is mold ripened. Let's talk about caffeine. So the recommended maximum amount of caffeine per day in pregnant women is 200 milligrams. Also remember that coffee is not just the only source of caffeine. Coke and tea, for example, also contain caffeine. There's approximately 150 milligrams of caffeine in two shots of espresso. So instead of buying your usual venti size at Starbucks, you might opt to buy one of the tall size drink instead. So while caffeine and sugar aren't the healthiest things to consume during a pregnancy, a little in moderation is okay. But the next things that I will talk about are things that you should 100% avoid because of the known dangers to your baby. So no consuming any alcohol. This includes beer, wine, gin, brandy. Any bottle with a percentage of alcohol on the label is not okay. There is some data that suggests that a very small amount of alcohol is not dangerous for the fetus, but there's no data on what amount is just a little bit, which means there's no way of knowing when you go from just a little bit to just a little bit too much. So it's not recommended to drink alcohol at all. Fetal alcohol syndrome is serious and it causes physical abnormalities, particularly in the face, as well as delayed development, learning disabilities, and behavioral problems. So it's better to be safe and avoid it entirely. And I wanna point out that the effects of alcohol consumption on the baby can be evident no matter what trimester you're in. So there's no safe time period that you can drink alcohol. Next, I wanna talk about teratogenic medications. So teratogens are medications or chemicals that cause abnormal formations of any part of the growing baby. There are some medications that you absolutely shouldn't take when you're pregnant, like for example, retinoids, which help with dark spots and acne and other skin conditions. Now other medications like seizure medications, for example, may be dangerous for the baby, but not taking them would be dangerous for the mom. And that's where it gets a little tricky. This is why if you are taking a daily prescription medication, it's important to talk to your OB about if they are safe. And if they aren't safe, to talk to them about what you need to take as an alternative or if you need to stop the medication altogether. Now, if you are already pregnant and taking medications that you haven't discussed with your OB, give them a call or go see them. Also, avoid any illicit drug use at all during your pregnancy. If you have an addiction and are thinking about getting pregnant or are pregnant, Talk to your OB about resources to help you quit. Now, as promised, I wanna just throw in what might quite possibly be the superfood during pregnancy, and that is avocados. Now, this isn't biased. Many studies have been done on the health benefits of avocados, but I just have to first say that I love avocados so very much. I eat them literally every day, and studies have shown that avocado just might fit the description for a superfood during pregnancy. It's so buttery, soft, and creamy, I, mm, it's really good. So they are super nutrient rich in vitamin E, folic acid, vitamin C, and potassium. It's also rich in the good kinds of fat, the monounsaturated fats. Unlike saturated fats, monounsaturated fats make the 
bad cholesterol levels go down and can even lessen the risk for heart disease. And if you're planning on breastfeeding after giving birth, consumption of avocado can still be beneficial for you because dietary changes can affect the quality of your breast milk. Growing babies need these good types of fat in their diet. Plus, avocados also contain a lot of fiber and antioxidants, which both have been associated with improvements in pregnancy health. So I hope that you liked this video. If you did, hey, means the world to me if you give it a thumbs up. If you have any topics that you'd like me to make a video about, put that in the comments section down below. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so. So I mentioned earlier in the video, um, my pregnancy playlist week by week. I'm going to link to that video right here. Go check it out, find the week that you're at. Maybe watch a few of the earlier videos just to get caught up. So click on that link right there and I will see you over 